it sounds a whole lot like Texas Tech is accusing Baylor and TCU of cheating. This is an emergency locked on Baylor. You are locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Bears fans, welcome to another edition of Locked On Baylor, special edition, breaking news edition here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team every day. I'm your host, Cam Stewart of ESPN Central Texas and the Cam Show on YouTube. But breaking just within the last hour of recording this, Max Olson of ESPN having the story from a source, College Helmet Communications on unencrypted frequencies. And the reason this came up, this is a message board genius post turned actual news story okay because the accuser here is texas tech from the article texas tech has requested a report from the big 12 on its recent games against tcu and baylor to ensure the integrity of the games were not compromised and the conference is accommodating that request now what they are talking about is the unencrypted frequencies on the new coach to player in-game communications the the comm systems in the helmets it was found out earlier this year that with the right training with the right scanner you can actually encrypt the messages in here and get inside that frequency texas tech athletic director kirby hocutt said he raised the issue during a call with big 12 athletic directors tuesday after learning the red raiders helmet communications were unencrypted and accessible to anyone with a scanner and knowledge of how to locate the frequencies now what kirby goes on to say in this is we've got to have a game whose integrity is not questionable in any way on a Saturday afternoon. We owe it to the 120 young men on our football team to ensure that happens and that it's a game of fair competition and the same set of rules are enforced. And once again, giving a report, requesting a report from the Big 12 on its games the last two weeks against TCU and Baylor, both Texas Tech losses to make sure that these were not compromised, these these coach-to-player communication systems this is a fascinating story to me this is brand new this year the coach to player communications and what i'm getting from this story is not that they're saying hey they knew our plays or this wasn't this wasn't right this was fishy or we were getting some static in our communications or anything just that tech has found out that these things could happen that someone could hack into this and, and hear the coach to player communications and that, hey, why don't we check this out on the last two games <clears throat> of which we have lost both? I think that timing is very interesting. The fact that they were 5-1 and one heading into that Baylor game, coming off a bye week, and two weeks later, after dropping their next two games, now this investigation is coming up. Now, it's a good Olsen story in that you can see plenty of other examples of, of where this might have been brought up, but it's not exactly like, hey, we think Baylor had our plays. Uh, he goes on to say in this, a frequency coordinator made the discovery in late September while setting up for the A&M Arkansas game in Arlington. The coordinator notified the SEC of his findings, as well as Baylor and TCU, who forwarded that information to the conference. Now, that information being that, hey, someone can get into this with the right training and the right scanner or whatever. They can get into this. And the SEC has come out with a statement of it. We've been aware of the issues and have stayed in communication with GSC. That's the company that, that runs this whole thing. We're not aware of any instances of the system being compromised during games. Uh, Jeremiah Donati of, of TCU has actually come out with a statement as well. Um, and that is our football coaching staff and I were made aware yesterday of player to coach helmet communication issues around the country. As with any other inquiry, we look forward to assisting the Big 12 Conference in its review process. And the very next line, Baylor Athletic Director Mac Rhodes could not be reached for comment. And as I record this right now, Wednesday night, just after 6 p.m. Central Time, there is still no word uh, from Mac Rhodes on this. But <clears throat> this is something that... Uh, apparently the the conferences knew about because the Big 12 notified, this is again directly from the story, the Big 12 notified equipment managers at its 16 member schools about switching to backup frequencies in early October. But some staffers may not have forwarded the information to their football staffs. Multiple ADs on the Big 12 call told ESPN they were unaware of the issues until Hocutt addressed it Tuesday. 
So it's not just tech. There were other schools apparently that did not have this memo forwarded to them that, hey, have a backup plan, have a backup frequency because this stuff can be compromised. Now, this comes up in the middle of a week of a big week in the Big 12. Baylor and TCU play each other on Saturday. So what does that have to do with this? Well, the Big 12, after that call, has instructed its 10 schools playing games this weekend to send their helmet communication devices back to GSC, the place that, that controls this whole thing, the provider for all 68 Power 4 teams this year, for a software update that would provide encryption, sources confirmed to ESPN. The modules and cutoff switches are expected to be updated and returned in time for Saturday's games. But is this an accusation here? Now, this is two, two wins uh, for Baylor TCU against Tech. Baylor crushes Tech in Lubbock, and then Tech goes out to TCU in Fort Worth and, and loses that one with a comeback victory for the Frogs. So why would this be coming up now? Other than that football coaching staff or athletic director staff, you know, seeing this and being like, it feels like they have our plays or they've got some sort of interference with the communication system. There's another shoe to drop here, whether this is a big fat nothing burger or it's something. There's another shoe to drop because it seems interesting that Tech might have known about this a while ago, the way the rest of the Big 12 knew about it or the Big 12 staff knew about it a while ago. And all of a sudden, after two straight losses are coming out saying, hey, we want this investigated now. And why is it only Tech? that is saying this now. Apparently, there were plenty of, of athletic departments that knew about this within the conference four weeks ago, three weeks ago, and no one thought, huh, that, that could be an issue. We should look into this. It happens to come after Tech loses two games in a row, and they're saying, hey, ooh, this is not good. We just lost our two, first two Big 12 games of the year. We should really look into this. I find the timing to be quite fishy, but if this is something that's true, that can be, you know, that 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 someone could hire someone to their staff as long as they know how to encrypt these messages, that that is a problem. Like, is there is there a team with a Connor Stallions out there that has a scanner that knows how to do this that can intercept these messages going from coach to quarterback and get it out to their defense? I think it's very interesting. Um, I don't, I'm not sure why Mac Rhodes hadn't said anything yet, but obviously he's going to deny whatever claims this this would be against him. And again, it's not really a direct claim against Baylor, but it kind of is. It's it's kind of a claim against Baylor and TCU. That, those are the games they're saying, hey, you need to check out these games. They're not looking at the Arizona game that they won. They're not looking at the Cincinnati game that they won, these big 12 games. They're not even looking at the Washington State game they lost. They said, these two games, we'd like these investigated which means they have some inkling towards Baylor and TCU might have known the plays. And again, very interesting timing from Kirby Hokut and Tech. Uh, if they thought that after the Baylor game, why wouldn't they bring it up after the Baylor game? Why did they wait to lose twice to then bring it up? But there is some, there's something here. It might be a nothing burger, but if it is, there's still some questions as to the timing of it all and why these memos weren't forwarded to some of the Big 12 schools. We don't even know which ones other than Tech, but apparently there were some other schools on that call that were floored by that information and were not privy to it. So it, it, it does feel quite interesting that Tech was 5-1, and one, tied atop the Big 12 standings, thought they were having a good year. And then all of a sudden, huh, do these guys know our plays? Hmm. If, if Baylor knew the plays, then they should have been better than two and four coming in against tech. I will say that. Okay. Maybe they hired someone in the bye week, but I doubt it. I, I, I really doubt it. Um, but this is a story that I'm sure won't be going away in, in the next few days here, especially if tech loses again, we will see. We will see where that goes. But that is the breaking news at this hour. Um, I wanted to do a full breaking episode, emergency episode, because I've got Stephen Simcox on the show tomorrow. We're doing a crossover to really preview this Baylor TCU game. So I'm sure this will come up again because those are the two teams that those games are now being investigated. But that's what we have at this hour. To What, me, what to me it sounds like is they could have cheated. Teams could have cheated and that's any teams. 
and we lost these two games. So let's, let's check these out. Um, but I, I don't know why this is an issue necessarily because the NFL has had this for years and it, it, it doesn't seem to be a problem in the NFL and tech apparently now might be going to some back to signals and signs and the weird, you know, billboard things to get some plays out there on Saturday. By the way, they have a big game. They take on Iowa State. Um, and so it does say here, the Red Raiders opted to move forward with a different coach-to-player system with encrypted communication provided by CoachCom for its game against number 11 Iowa State on Saturday rather than wait for the software update or the results of the Big 12 inquiry. So what's, what's going on here? And I have that question from the tech side rather than the Baylor side. By the way, it is worth noting this other quote that um, that uh, that ESPN got. That uh, what's his name? Oh my gosh, Max Olson got. It was from a a Big Twelve chief of staff. It's an unnamed Big Twelve chief of staff saying there's no real advantage. One, you're speaking a different language. Two, if you think you're able to enact in real time what they say and try to do on the field, you're delusional. You're just being your stereotypical paranoid football coach. You cannot relay it to kids fast enough. So is Tech being paranoid? That's what it sounds like to me, but can't wait to hear what, what comes out of this. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. What is going to come out of this? Will this be a lingering issue? Uh, this is what we know at this hour. We're still waiting for Mac Rhodes to address it, but to me it seems like something that it's not nefarious for it might not have even happened by the way, just that it can happen just like you can cheat in any way. Anyway, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe. We will have that full Baylor TCU crossover preview on tomorrow's episode of your favorite show locked on 